Hello everybody, uh, I'm back with another tutorial and in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to import videos into Spark AR, how to make JPG and PNG sequences and even sprite sheets. So let's begin. Alright, so uh, we all know that Spark AR has a limitation of 4 MB per project. So uh, we cannot actually uh, drag and drop MP4, AVI, MOV files like the video files into the Spark AR assets. Uh, we could actually go here and click on import and get texture animations. And these will be GIFs or PNG or JPG files. So we will be learning how to create these and also another method known as sprite sheets. So uh, let's begin by going into After Effects. So this is the After, After Effects interface and I'll be just clicking on Ctrl and N and I'll create a new composition. I'll set the width to 1024 by 1024 as uh, the Spark AR's uh, texture limitation is uh, 1024 by 1024 and, and I'll set the duration to 3 seconds. That means the total video length will be uh, 3 seconds. So just click on OK and I'll just drag and drop a video into it. So I have a video here. Let's take the first one for now. Okay, so now we have the video here and let me just show it. So it's going out of the frame. So let me just click on S and I'll just scale it down. I'll click on Control so that I could scale it down a little more accurately. So once we have scaled it down properly, I'll just hit the space bar to see how does it look that nothing goes out of the frame. So this looks pretty good. So once we have this, how do we get this into Spark AR? So we can either convert it into a JPG or a PNG. So for uh, things which have like a lot of dark things, like for this frame, as most of the thing is black and there's not much of detail in it, uh, it will be much advisable to go with the PNG format. But in frames in which there's a lot of textures and stuff, it is uh, better to go with JPG. So for now, I'll just go with JPG as JPG will uh, be good for uh, the main uh, sequence. So I'll just click on the composition and I'll go into composition here and I'll go into add to render queue. Once this has been done, I'll just go into the output mode and click on the lossless. So here we can see that the format is AVI. We do not want this. We want a JPG sequence. So I'll just click on JPG. If you want, you could go to PNG sequence. If your uh, texture has lots of uh, black areas or if that uh, video has transparency in it. So if you want the alpha channel to be there, you will have to go with the PNG sequence. You do not have the choice with the JPG sequence. If you go with the JPG sequence, it will add a black layer behind it automatically. So once we have selected the JPG sequence, I'll just click on OK and I'll click on Output to. So this basically means where do I want to save it. So I'll just save it in Documents right now. Click on Save and I'll click on Render. So now this has been rendered. And here we can go into Documents and into Comp1. I'll just click here and check the properties. And the size is 21 MB which is too big for a Spark AI uh, project. So how do we deal with this? So first I'll go to Spark AI. I'll just minimize this right now. And let's, and I have already converted actually this same thing over here. This one, I just can go to properties. And this one, the same thing. But uh, the file size is different, that one was 21 MB and this one is about 26 MB. So what's the difference? The difference is just that the composition which we created here was 3 seconds long and the one which is here is slightly bigger. So first once we have the PNG sequence out, uh, we would like to check onto it and check for any black frames. So here we have something but on the frame 01 and 00 we have nothing. So I'll just click here, select both of these and just click on delete. And the same uh, process, 
at the end of the sequence. So let's say where can I see the last sparkle? I can see sparkles here, here, here. And at about frame 120, I could hardly see anything. So let's go to frame 120 and I just delete them. So here we have the optimized PNG sequence here, that is the JPG sequence. And I have uh, multiple uh, videos of fireworks. For example, let's say this one. This is the firework. And I have uh, done the same thing with it and I created a sequence out of it. So let's say I want to import this one, the, the second one, which is this PNG sequence here. And I'll just go to Spark here, and go to plus and import, and I'll just import a texture animation. Once that has been done, I'll just click on choose files. And I'll go to, let's say, the Firework 2. I click here and I click on shift so basically I'm selecting all of these frames and I click on open so once this has been done you can see that the file size is above 4 MB even though the file size here let's say it was 22 MB uh, spark has automatically reduce its size to 4 MB and uh, this will be uh, same uh, with other fireworks too for example let's say I open another animation sequence and I'm just selecting all of these yep so once we have this here I don't want uh, to click texture reduction right now and even frame reduction uh, because we have another method to deal with this thing. So I'll just uh, enable the add to plane and just click on import. Once we have done that, uh, we can see that uh, the plane is uh, playing the texture in a looping animation sequence. So the first thing is done that we have taken a video and we have got it in and we have imported it into Spark AR. I'll just uh, increase the size of this so, let's make it so that we could see it more clearly. So I'll just click on the texture right here and we can see that it has uh, been uh, the file size has been changed. So I'll just change the file size from 12 MB, 7 MB, 3 MB. All of these are big file sizes so I'll just click on automatic and click on manual and immediately we can see that once it selects PNG the file size has become 1.5 MB. I have just selected its fastest one if you want to click on the best it will take some time and here we can see that it has become 1.3 MB. I'll do the same thing with all of these. So you can see that the file has been imported into Spark AR and it is well under the 4 MB limit. So theoretically you can import two of these uh, into your project, two of these uh, firework videos. Uh, so many of you must be asking how can I get my hands on to this clips and stuff. So this one will be available for free and all of these and all of these files will be available on my Gumroad. You can download it from there. Uh, once we have done that, let's click on After Effects and let's say I want to make a sprite sheet out of this. So let me go on Composition and click on File and I'll click on Scripts. So this script I have here, which is the sprite generator, and the script uh, will be you will be able to download the script from the link in the description. Uh, it's uh, it's available for free, but you need to log in into the website and just download it. It's as simple as that. You don't need to pay anything. Okay, so first we'll have the width and height set, which is 102 over 102 over, which is good, and the frames. So let's say uh, this is 3 seconds long. So each second has 25 frames. So 75 frames is the total duration. 
so we could keep it to 81 frames or 64 frames so i'm sticking on 64 right now and i click on generate this will generate two more compositions and i click on animation and i'll just drag and drop the component to this and i'll just scale it down perfect i'll just uh, make these top two layers invisible and go into atlas wait for it to render and here we can see we have a sprite sheet right here so what you can do with this is that instead of importing one one image for each and every frame you could have all of these together into just one image so how do we get this into spark here so i just go into composition and I'll just go to same frame as make sure that before you do this this is at full if this is at quarter you will be rendering it out at the quarter of the quality and uh, it will be very pixelated so make sure that this is at full just go into composition and save frame as and file uh, we can see that a few frames are missing because uh, out of the 75 frames you have only taken the first 64 frames so you could choose uh, the 81 frames one and you have a few blank frames over there so once we have that we'll just click on the output mode and here there is photoshop but we want a jpg so uh, since we are selecting only composition only one frame uh, it doesn't matter if you say jpg sequence or png sequence as the sequence will have only one image so let me just quickly save it in the downloads and just click on render once this has been rendered, I just go into Spark here and plus import from computer. I just go into downloads. And we have this here. So, how do we get this to play in Spark here? I just go into the type and we can see it says single texture. I click on sprite sheet. And this one has 64 by 64. So, it means it has 8 rows and Eight columns. The total number of sprites are sixty-four. So here we can see that even after we put the row and the columns, uh, it did not automatically uh, make it into sixty-four. This is because let's say we had done it into eighty-one, but we wanted to only use the first seventy-five frames. So you could do that by putting here nine by nine and the sprites to be seventy-five. So in the first seventy-five frames would have been used. All right. So once we have that done, I'll just make a animation sequence out of this. So playback controller and well, we go into animation sequence, just animal, animation sequence, and here we can click on add class. Once this has been done, I'll just go into this plane and create a new texture. Make it a flat texture and select the texture to the animation sequence 0 and here we can see that this animation has been played onto the sprite sheet no this animation has been played onto the plane and if i want to play the other one so i can just change switch the materials and this sprite sheet's total file size is about 600 mb sorry 600 kilobytes which is well under the 4 mb mark and you can easily uh, make more sprite sheets like this using shorter animations or different things and uh, this also works on uh, png images so let's say that you have a video in which the background is transparent so instead of uh, outputting it from jpg sequence you will just output it to png sequence and that's it uh, you'll be done also uh, how you could download this easily i'll have a link in the description to download all of these files these are fireworks basically you can see a few of them you could uh, use these in your projects and stuff and now even the diwali hackathon is going on you could use them in the digital fireworks projects and stuff so all of this will be uh, available for download in the link uh, in the description and uh, that's it and thank you for watching and we'll meet next time. Bye-bye.